We are moving on to question 5 of paper 1, November 2020. It reads, the graph of fx equals to 3 to the power of negative x is sketched below. A is the y-intercept of f, so A is the y-intercept, and B is the point of intersection of f and the line y equal to 9. Then the first question reads, write down the coordinates of A. So at A, the x value would be 0, and the y value would be 3 to the power of negative 0, because y is represented by 3 to the power of negative x. Therefore, the coordinate of A is 0 and 1, because 3 to the power of negative 0 is equal to 1. The next question reads, determine the coordinates of B. So what we know is that B is on the line y is equal to 9. So we know the y value of B. And in order to find the x value, we would use the equation given as well. So fx is given as equal to 3 to the power of negative x fx represents y, so the y coordinate of b is equals to 9, and that is equals to 3 to the power of negative x. Now I can rewrite 9 as 3 to the power of 2, and that is equals to 3 to the power of negative x, and because the bases are the same, we can solve x. Therefore, b's coordinate is negative 2 and 9. The next question says, write down the domain of the inverse function. Now, domain refers to the x values of the inverse function. So there are two ways to answer it. If you can remember, the inverse function is the reflection of the graph of fx over the line y is equals to x. And if I reflect this graph around this line, it will form this shape. Now we could see that the y-axis will act as a vertical asymptote, and on the y-axis, x is equal to zero. And the graph is moving right, so in the positive direction of x. So the domain or the x values of the inverse is x bigger than 0. Another way to find the domain of the inverse function is to consider the range of the original function. So domain discusses x values and range discusses y values. So if I want to find the domain of the inverse function, I can consider the range of the original function. And if I look on the graph, I could see that the range is y bigger than 0, because the graph is always above the x-axis. And to change that to the inverse function, I simply need to swap x and y's position. So therefore, the domain of the inverse function is x bigger than 0. The next question reads, describe the translation from f to h. So we know that fx is equal to 3 to the power of negative x. And we want to describe how we get to hx, which is equal to 27 over 3 to the power of x. 
So let us start by rewriting hx. So the function of h can be written as 27 multiplied with 3 to the power of negative x. Because if I want to remove the fraction, I simply need to move the 3 to the power of x to the numerator. And that means the exponent would change signs. Next, I can see that 27 can be written as 3 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of negative x. Now, I have one base of 3. Remember, if the bases are the same, we can add up the exponents. So it will be 3 to the power of 3 minus x. But this does not help us yet to describe the translation. I want to rewrite the function of h in this format. So that would mean in the exponent I would factorize or take out a negative 1. And if I remove a negative 1, I have x minus 3 within the bracket. And that will look like 3 to the power of negative and in brackets x minus 3. Now we can see that this format looks the same. So if I compare the function of f with the function of h, we can see it's 3 to the power of negative something. And here we have h as 3 to the power of negative something. And we can see the movement or the translation that took place was by 3 units. And if it's x minus 3, it means we have shifted f 3 units to the right. The next question says, determine the values of x for which hx is smaller than 0. So we know that the function of h is equal to 27 over 3 to the power of x. Now I can multiply both sides by 3 to the power of x. Therefore, 27 would be smaller than 3 to the power of x. And again, I can rewrite 27 as 3 to the power of 3. So this statement would be true if x is bigger than 3.